I'm laying brick on this house today and we're working in the sun, it's hot, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you what you need to do with your mortar. In the summertime when it's hot and dry, your mortar dries out. And there are a few things that I wanted to show you. You've probably realized now as you've been working on your workstation, you're learning how to use your trowel, that the consistency and the workability of the mortar is very important. And so today I want to show you just a little bit what you need to do as you're working with your mortar board. Now out here in the heat of the day you can see around the edges of the mortar board that it's starting to dry out. And we, uh, we have buckets of water all along the scaffolding and we are continually taking water and wetting the edges of the board. And then we sprinkle a little bit on the mortar and then we'll temper that mortar up. We'll continually do that all day long to keep that mortar the consistency that we need so that we can use it. That mortar dries out continually and probably every five to ten minutes we will be doing that in the heat of the day so that we can keep that mortar very workable. So as you're working on your workstation or if you're doing a small project, that's something you're going to have to do. Have plenty of water around and you can just keep those mortar boards good and wet, especially around the edges. That'll just suck the, mortar, the moisture right out of that mortar. And then continually, each time you go back to the mortar board, you'll probably have to, to temper that mortar up and get it so that it's at the consistency that you can use. If it's too wet, you'll notice that you can't get it to stay on your trowel or on the brick. You just can't handle it. If it's too dry, you can't handle it either. So you need to experiment a little bit and get that to the consistency that you really can handle it well with the trial. Now you can see that right there is back. It was quite dry, but by adding some water, mixing it up, we've now got it back to the consistency that we can really use that mortar in laying our brick. Well, now we're going to take a few minutes, go over to the mixer, and I'm going to show you how to mix mortar. You'll recall we talked about the lime mortar that we mixed when we were working on our workstation. That's mortar that doesn't have any cement in it. We just use it for training purposes. But now we're going to show you how to mix re regular mortar. We'll show you three different types of mortar that you can use. So we'll go over to the mixer now and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, now mixing mortar is pretty much the same way we did when we mixed our lime mortar. It can be done in a wheelbarrow with a shovel and a hoe, but if you have a larger project that you need a lot more mortar, then you're going to have to have access to a mortar mixer. We'll show you in just a few minutes how to mix mortar in a mortar mixer. First, I want to show you a couple different products that you can use. Now, we have what is called a dry mix pre-blended mortar mix. Now, this type of mix has all the ingredients in it. It has lime, cement, the sand, and all you have to do is add water and mix it up. Uh, that's a product that you can use for uh, laying 50 to 100 brick. After that point, it becomes quite expensive to use that type of a mortar mix. Now we have here some cement and lime. Now we talked about lime before. We mixed lime mortar. Again, we're going to use the same type of lime and now we're going to add cement. And this is type 1A or 2A is about the same thing. So you can use either type 1A or 2A cement. Okay, now we have different strengths of mortar. And the strength of the mortar deter is determined by how much cement we put in the mortar. If we put a bag of lime or a one part lime to one part cement, we have a certain strength. If we need to increase that strength, because we might uh, be laying brick in an area where there's a lot of freezing and thawing, then you might want to increase that to maybe two parts cement and one part lime. That's going to increase the strength of your mortar. Normally we put in one part cement, one part lime, and about 30 shovels of sand, or three and a half times the amount of lime and cement that you've put in. So if you put in one bag of cement, one bag of lime, 
you'll want to put in about 30 shovels of sand. And again, that comes with experiencing knowing exactly how much. And we'll look at the mortar as it's being mixed and we'll show you how you can tell if you need a little more sand or if you put a little too much sand in and you're going to have to add a little more lime and cement. So the tender will come in now and we'll start mixing that mortar and you can see how we do that. Okay, now the first thing you do, he's already added some water. You get a couple buckets of water in and then we'll add some sand. And the sand will give the lime and cement something to adhere to when we put that in. If you put the lime and cement in first, a lot of times the lime and cement just adheres to the mixer and it gets all balled up. So it's a good idea to add some sand to begin with. And again, make sure, uh, we always have our guys use safety glasses so they don't get stuff in their eyes. Make sure you have the uh, safety guard on the mixer. Anytime you're using equipment like this, you've got to be concerned about safety. He adds a little more water, mix it up a little more. Now he'll add his lime and cement. A good idea is to cut the lime and cement in half and then put a half a bag in at a time. It works uh, a lot easier to pick up a half a bag rather than a full bag. And so that's why he's cutting that in half right now. You can see he's, he's devised a little method. He's using the shovel and the trowel to break that open. A little less messy. And again, step back when you put that lime in. That's an awful light powder and you don't want to get that in your, your lungs or your eyes. And, uh, and always be checking to make sure your mortar doesn't get too dry in there uh, so that it won't, uh, the mixer won't run. Here, as you're adding material, you're always looking to see if you need more water as you add the lime and cement. He's always noticing how dry it is in there and he'll add more water let it mix up, add a little more sand, let it mix. Normally to mix a batch of mortar takes about 10 or 15 minutes and so you add material, you let it mix, add a little more water, let it mix. And again, he's counting as he's putting in so he knows he, exactly how much and he does that the same each time so we get a consistent batch of mortar. And again, this batch, we're putting a bag of cement and a bag of lime. That's a pretty consistent batch. If, you'll, if you want it a little stronger, you'd put in a bag of lime and a bag and a half of cement. Roughly the same amount of sand, probably three or four more shovels of sand when you put in a bag and a half of cement. You can also put coloring in the mortar. You can get various different colors from the masonry supply companies. You can add uh, browns, blacks, all kinds of different colors to get the uh, desired mortar color to go with the various brick you're using. Now you'll notice as you see that mortar mixing in the mixer, you can see how it clings to the side of the mortar or the mixer. That means that it's still a pasty, sticky mortar. If it, you see where it doesn't stick, then you know you've got too much 
sand in it, so you want to get it to the point where it's still sticking to the edge of the, mort of the mortar mixer. And again, that's something you just get with experience as you mix that. At some point, you can see that it's extremely sticky and you need more sand. You can look at it and then see that you're getting more sand in. It's starting to fall off the edges of the mixer, not sticking quite as well, and so you've about reached the point where you've got enough sand in there. And the tender will always be looking at that and noticing that as it's mixing. Okay, now when you're dumping the mortar out of the mixer into a wheelbarrow or as a tub like we are, you always have to remember that that tub or wheelbarrow has to be wet down. If it's not wet, when you put it in that dried wheelbarrow or tub, it's going to suck the moisture right out of that mortar, and it's going to be dried mortar. And you can see that he's also scraping off the lip of the mixer. You leave that on there, it's going to dry out, and then the next time you go to take the mortar out, it's going to be awfully dry, and you're going to have lumps in your mortar. Lumpy mortar is something that you really don't want. You can't have lumps in it. Okay, like I mentioned to begin with, mortar is a very important part of laying brick. Not only does mortar provide strength for the wall, but it needs to be consistent so that it can make the job of laying brick easier. With a good consistent mortar, it, the, uh, the process of laying brick becomes much easier. Now we've talked about various types of mortar, different strengths of mortar. Some come in pre-mixed -ba pre bags, a little more convenient, they're more expensive. If you want a mortar that needs more strength, you're in an area that you have a lot of freezing and thawing, or the structure you're building has to have a strong mortar, the cement in the mortar uh, increases the strength. So if a, a stronger mortar, you put in more cement. Again, the, the ratio, Normally is one part cement, one part lime, three to four parts sand. Uh, and that needs to be measured accurately. Once you get good at it, you can use a shovel method and you can pretty much look at the mortar and tell uh, if your ingredients are correct. Uh, again, there's a lot of different types of mortars in different parts of the country. They have ready mix mortar. Comes out similar to a ready mix truck. You can buy it that way. Again, it's more expensive unless you're using a great deal of it. Now, we also have a book. Uh, it's called uh, Mortars, deals with all different types of mortars. Answers a lot of questions that you might have uh, dealing with different types of mortars. If you're interested in getting this book, it's in the libraries, most libraries across the country have it, as well as if you call our office, we can arrange to have that sent to you. I think it's somewhere between $15 and $20 for that book. Uh, again, be consistent when you mix your mortar. Learn what works well on your trial and then use that knowledge that you gain to make your mortar consistent each time you use it. You'll learn if it's too dry, it won't stick to the brick, it won't stick to your trial. If it's too wet, too sloppy, you can't use it get that uh, good consistency that you need and you'll have better success laying brick.